welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History video. Um, these videos were inspired by a book I wrote a few years ago called On This Day in Tudor History, funnily enough. I'm Claire Ridgway, I'm sure you know me by now though. Okay, I'm going to take you to 1554 today, which uh, if you know your, uh, your Tudor dates, is in the reign of Queen Mary I. It was on this day in Tudor history, the 12th of February 1554, that Lady Jane Grey, the former Queen Jane, and her husband, Lord Guildford Dudley, were executed. Now, the couple had been found guilty of high treason back in November 1553 for taking possession of the Tower of London, uh, for proclaiming Jane Queen, and then Jane was also had the added charge of signing various documents in the name of Queen. Um, Guildford had, they'd both been found guilty of that, and Guildford had been sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered, the full traitor's death, and Jane had been sentenced to be burned or beheaded. Now, Mary had put off signing their death warrants as she intended to be merciful to Jane and eventually pardon her and perhaps release her into a house arrest and just sort of keep an eye on her. However, we then have Wyatt's rebellion sort of taking place um, in early 1554. The rumblings of it started before Christmas uh, 1553 and into early 1554. And Jane's father, Henry Grey, Duke of Suffolk, was involved in the rebellion, was one of the conspirators. And the rebellion sought to depose Queen Mary I and to replace her with her Protestant half-sister, Elizabeth. So Mary, because of Wyatt's rebellion and because of Jane being implicated in it just because her father was involved in it, Jane wasn't actually implicated in it in any other way. But because of that, Mary was under pressure from members of her Privy Council and also from the Spanish ambassadors because she was planning to marry Philip of Spain. She was under pressure to deal with Jane once and for all, to deal with her decisively, to get rid of her. Um, Jane and Guildford were, after all, potential figureheads for rebellion if she left them alive. And also, Jane was being very vocal. Um, she was allowed to write letters and send letters, and she was being very vocal in these letters um, in her opposition to Mary's religious policies, which, of course, were all about bringing England back into the Catholic fold, um, and also being very vocal in her opposition to Catholicism in general. As Wyatt's rebels marched on London in early February 1554, Mary made the decision to sign Jane and Guildford's death warrants, although she commuted their sentences uh, to the more merciful beheading. They still weren't executed straight away. Mary gave time for her confessor and chaplain, Dr John Feckenham, to visit Jane um, in her lodgings at the Tower of London to try and convert her. Uh, if her body can be saved, if she was still going to be executed, at least her soul could be saved. But there was also a chance that if Jane did convert so that she wasn't a figurehead for rebellion anymore, that um, you know Mary might be merciful to her. But Jane stood firm in her faith. At 10 o'clock on the morning of the 12th of February, Guildford Dudley was led out of the Tower of London up to Tower Hill to the scaffold there. Now, no priest is mentioned as accompanying him to the scaffold, so it appears that Guildford, uh, like Jane, stood firm in his Protestant faith. Guildford addressed the crowd um, that were gathered there briefly, then he got down on his knees and prayed, holding up his eyes and hands to God many times. Then, after asking the crowd to pray for him, he put his neck on the block and the executioner beheaded him, mercifully 
with a single stroke of the axe, thank goodness. Now, Eric Ives, who has written a book on Lady Jane Grey, Lady Jane Grey, a Tudor mystery, he quotes Richard Grafton, who um, who very probably had known Guildford uh, personally, as recalling 10 years later that even those that never before the time of his execution saw him did with lamentable tears bewail his death. So it was seen as, you know, a very tragic end to Guildford's life. Following his uh, beheading, uh, Guildford's remains were taken by cart down from Tower Hill back to the tower and laid to rest in the Royal Chapel at the tower, the Chapel of St. Peter ad Vincula. It was then turn, the turn of his wife. Now, Jane wasn't taken up to Tower Hill. She was escorted to a scaffold that had been uh, built near the White Tower within the confines of the Tower of London. She went there and she addressed the waiting crowd. Good people, I'm come hither to die, and by a law I'm condemned to the same. The fact indeed against the Queen's Highness was unlawful, and the consenting thereunto by me but touching the procurement and desire thereof by me, or on my behalf, I do wash my hands thereof in innocency before the face of God and the face of you, good Christian people, this day. I pray you all, good Christian people, to bear me witness that I die a true Christian woman and that I do look to be saved by no other means but only by the mercy of God in the merits of the blood of his only Son, Jesus Christ. I confess when I did know the word of God, I neglected the same and loved myself and the world, and therefore this plague or punishment is happily and worthily, deservedly happened unto me for my sins. I thank God of his goodness that he has given me a time and respite to repent. Now, good people, I pray you to assist me with your prayers. Now, good people, while I am alive, I pray you to assist me with your prayers. Now, her biographer, Eric Ives, writes of how in her speech, Jane was emphasising that she was saved by no other means but by the mercy of God, and that is the doctrine of justification by faith alone. And she also emphasises that she doesn't need prayers after her death. She's saying, while I am alive, assist me with your prayers. So she doesn't believe that prayers will help her, you know, in purgatory. She's asking for people to pray for her now um, until, you know, she's executed. So Jane did not waver from her Protestant faith. After her speech, Jane knelt and said Psalm 51, the Misere, in English. Have mercy upon me, O God, after thy great goodness, according to the multitude of thy mercies, do away mine offences. She then was said to have embraced Dr. John Feckenham, um, Mary's confessor, who had tried to convert her to Catholicism. Uh, Jane said to him, go and may God satisfy every wish of yours. It's then said that she gave her handkerchief and her gloves to Elizabeth Tilney and her prayer book to Thomas Bridges, the deputy lieutenant of the tower, who she'd asked to pass, pass on the book to her father, the Duke of Suffolk, who was still imprisoned at the time. She then removed her gown, her headdress and her collar. And after forgiving the executioner for the deed that he was about to do and begging him, dispatch me quickly, knelt at the block. She tossed her hair forward so it was out of the way of her neck and put on her blindfold. It was then that um, we see a slight panic. She'd stood firm, she'd been courageous and, and who can blame her for losing her composure at this point? She's said to have said, what shall I do? Where is it? Because of course she was blindfolded. A bystander helped her, guided Jane to the block where she uh, put her neck on the block, praying, 
Lord, into thy hands I commend my spirit. She was then beheaded with one blow of the axe, and it's believed that her remains were also taken to the chapel of St. Peter ad Vincula. Now, when I visit the tower today, as well as visiting the chapel and paying my respects to those who are buried there, people like Guildford Dudley and Jane, I always make sure that I go to the Beecham Tower as well, because in the Beecham Tower, which is where many Tudors were imprisoned, including Guildford uh, for a time, um, there are carvings in the stone wall, the kind of Tudor equivalent of graffiti. And there are some amazing elaborate uh, carvings, but there is one very simple carving, which just says I-A-N-E. Now, I's and J's were used interchangeably in Tudor times, so it says Jane. And I, I look at it and I always wonder if Guildford uh, carved that into the wall while he was a prisoner in the tower, and it just really touches me. And then there is an amazing carving. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's the Dudley carving, and it's a reminder of Guildford, his father, and his brothers, who were all imprisoned there for their part in putting Jane on the throne in July 1553. The carving features the bear and the ragged staff, which is the badge of the Earls of Warwick and is also the badge of the County of Warwickshire still today and also the double-tailed lion rampant, which was the badge of the Dudley family. As well as those uh, emblems, it also features a floral border. Now this lovely floral border has lots of symbolism packed into it. It has oak leaves and acorns for Robert Dudley, because Quercus rubber is the Latin for English oak. We then have roses for Ambrose Dudley. Um, we have honeysuckle for Henry Dudley because the Latin for honeysuckle is Lonicera Henry or Lonicera Henry. And we have gillyflowers for Guildford Dudley. The inscription that is with the carving says, you that these beasts do well behold and see may deem with ease wherefore here may they be. With borders eke within, there may be found four brothers' names who list to search the ground. And I always get so choked up seeing the Jane carving and this beautiful Dudley carving, which just takes my breath away because I just look at it and I just think of the Dudley family and Jane. John Dudley, Duke of Northumberland, lost his life to the executioner because of his part in putting Jane on the throne. Guildford lost his life. Fortunately, Robert, Henry and Ambrose escaped the axeman. But it's just so poignant. And Guildford was thought to have been about 18 when he was executed and Jane just 16. And I just find it very, very emotional and very, very moving. So I'll leave you with photos of those two carvings and uh, you'll have to see them in real life. You'll have to go to the tower and make sure you go to the Beecham Tower and see the beautiful stone carvings. Anyway, that was uh, this day uh, on this day in history for the 12th of February, 1554. I'll be back with another video tomorrow. You can subscribe by clicking that button there. Take care. Bye-bye.